Welcome to Tipcast by the Nina Guardian. Hello and welcome to Tipcast. Myself, Shane Stapleton. Uh, Shane Brophy will be on in a few minutes when he's over uh, baby mind and duties. And joining me today is Michal Webster, Lockmore man and former Tipperary hurler. How's things, Michal? Not too bad, no, Shane. Fun. Good. Yeah, you've had you've had a few days to unwind, I suppose, since the uh, the end of Lockmore's unbelievable season and the 19 weeks in a row, like finished up Bally Gunner 211, Lockmore Castellani 12. Before we get into the game, what a season it's been. Yeah, it's a brilliant season. Um, I suppose, look, disappointing finishing in the end, but like you have to overlook, you know, obviously you've talked to a few of the lads now since last, over the last few days, a few of the players, and, um, you know, what they've done and what they've achieved, like, you know, after last year losing and the two finals are coming back again, you know, and, you know, it's just a brilliant, it's a brilliant uh, last few weeks for the parish, brilliant few months, you know what I mean, and we're so, so proud of them, like, you know, and, you know, I don't think anything that's happened in the last week will outweigh what has happened throughout the year, you know, and that's, you know, we're proud of them and they're, they're a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant group of players, like, you know. Yeah, like, did you see, you know, when the two finals were lost last year in such devastating circumstances, Did you, what did you expect from this season before it started out? Yeah, geez, I remember being on the field last year, you know, especially we lost the we, we, we lost the football and or we lost the hurling and then, you know, we lost the football and I remember meeting the guys and, you know, I remember I, I was there talking to a few of the players on the field last year and there were tears in my own eyes. I remember talking to Evan Sweeney, like, and, you know, I could see the heartache, of, you know, and, you know, I remember myself, I picked up my father now for the last few days of, for, for the county finals that brought him in and just the joy and elation to see those lads, you know, and, and the turnaround in a year and, it was just brilliant, like, you know what I mean? And it just justifies the work that they put in, like, you know, and I suppose they, they never complain, like, you know, they're week in, week out, and they just get on with it, like, and I suppose we're used to that and lock more, but um, it was just brilliant for them, like, you know, to come up, get over the line after that heartache, you know? And if we're to, to focus on Sunday's match, horrendous weather down in Fraher Field, I mean, you wouldn't put a, you wouldn't put a duck out in it, really. Uh, Frankie McGrath, I know he was talking afterwards, he was talking about maybe the venue and why not in like a bigger stadium or a better stadium. I mean, you look at the Leinster Club football semi-finals this weekend, they're both going to be on at Croke Park. So it's obviously, you know, you could say that, but you could t- it's, it was the two red cards really to, to two McGraths, No McGrath in the first half, John McGrath in the second half. Do you feel that that was ultimately what decided it? Because, you know, I know there was a slow start, 1-5 to a point at the first water break, but a lot more have been making slow starts all year and coming back. They have, yeah, but um, you know, if you look at the stats of the match in general, like you know, it was in puck outs and you know, p- freeze and uh, points and play and you know, st- stuff like that. Like Lockmore were were well up in the stats, you know what I mean? And they were, yeah, they had a slow start, but they were well in it, like you know. And you know, I feel that especially after Noel got sent off, they even got better, like you know what I mean. And a few lads came in, and you know, Belly Gunner were under pressure, like and you know. Like nobody likes a lot more lads who never once for giving out, like you know. But I've been saying this for years, and it's it's there's a lot of money in the GA, and there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of things we're not doing right, and it's you know, like it doesn't matter about TV rights and all that, that shouldn't come into the equation when it comes down to the importance of the game, like you know. So if a match is going to be played late, and you know, it has to be in the best facility, you know, you're going to have to have, to have the best field, and the best setup, you know, and the officials are going to have the best, have the best help they can get to do a match, you know, especially that time of year, slippy conditions, you know, rain, and it doesn't matter if, how bad the weather it is, it's the same for both teams, but, you know, to, to say that you'd go down to Friar Field to play a Munster semi-final, like, you know, probably light's not as good as what you get, from, you know, Parky Cree, Frankie alluded to as well, the match could have been played there, like, you know, so straight away, it's a bad start, like, you know, and I think the GA need to get it right, like, you know, we're coming into a split season now where you have, um, you're, go- you're going to have, like, the end of the year for the, and, and you're probably going to have a TV rights going to come into play where someone is going to say, right, there's an opportunity here to really showcase this, right? So it's, it's like inter-county now, right, the club scene is, and that's the way they're training, and that's the way they should be treated, you know, to respect both teams, and, uh, you know, same happened above in the Connacht club, for, you know, match as well. You have to have the, the same for everybody. And I think, I, I said to lads before, like even if there was one in each provincial province, if there's an all-weather field, floodlit or whatever, it doesn't matter if it's in January or February, whenever you have to play. Both of them have a good surface, the proper system in place. And then it's down to the officials getting help as in regarding what do they need? Like they need to you know, come forward and say, 
we can't do this. This hurling game is too fast. It's there's too much happening, and we need you know we need we need help. They need like you know it's fine. I know Barry Kelly came out there and supported Johnny Murphy and said you know we get make mistakes. That's understandable. But if you go home at the end of the day, and whether you're a Ballygun or a play person or a Lockmore person, and you look at that match and you can say to yourself that was the right decision. You might not like it, but you live with it. You know what I mean? But if you have a situation where something has happened and it's blatant, like you know, like Noel McGrath got the belt, and again, it's not so great, but Noel McGrath got a belt before that 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 time. Okay, the linesman was in the same position as he was to make the call that he made when Noel hit your man's shoulder. Now he didn't see the first one, and he certainly didn't see the second one, right? So you know, to, you know unless it's con- conclusive, like that something has happened, it can't be called out, and you can't send off someone, you know. Lads have invested too much in it. And if it happened for Barry Gunner, I'd be saying the same thing. It's not because it's a lot more men, but it's just, it's not good enough. And it's it's not, I don't blame the officials. I blame the GA, you know, I, I blame it at the top level. It has to come down. They have to say, we need it. Whether it's a second referee that doesn't have a whistle on the field, just watching for stuff like that, that, that the referee can go to him. Or, you know, we have so many video videos, matches being recorded now, okay, that there's another referee in the stand or, in a room, watch it. He just goes to his ear. Like by the time he went over to the linesman and came back again, he could have got someone on the, on the radio and say, that's not a red card. It's just a yellow. Go on. And then, as I say, when you go home, at the end of the day, everybody looks back and they say, that was the proper call. And then, you know, nobody can complain then. Yeah. And w- would you agree, like, do it for the games that are televised and have cameras there. And, you know, if there's another game going on, let's say a Munster Intermediate Club, and they don't have the cameras. Well, just use it when it's available, a bit like hockey. Yeah, that's it. Like, you know, it, as I say, like, you know, this, this it came out there yesterday, there's a big, um, you know, the government, uh, you know, are pouring money into the GA again, like, you know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things going on in the GA, but it's, it's the small things that kill, you know, it kill, kills the likes of managers. Like, do you know, no one regret, like, you look at rugby, right? And, Rugby back years ago, if you remember, like when they were playing and something would happen in the field, there'd be a big row and the tail strips off each other, right? Now, there's nothing done because they know that this man is after call, doing something wrong and he's going to be called out there, okay? So he doesn't have to retaliate because he knows he's going to be earmarked and whatever's, and then you see whether it's a yellow card or a red card or whatever happens. And that's it. The game, you know, the game goes on then and has cleaned up the game so much, you know. And it's the same. This needs to happen in the GA. It needs to be cleaned up, especially, you know, lads going down, you know, when they're not injured, you know, that needs to be called out too. They need to be, you know, whether it's bringing suspensions or whatever, or a sin bin for, you know, the likes of that. It'll stop it then. And you know what I mean? And it's a fair, it's, it, it's going to make the game better in the long term, you know. Yeah, so um, I think with Shane Brophy just coming online here in a second, I, I'll bring him on just uh, just shortly now. But do you know, you know, we can talk about the red cards all we like. Um, but do you, do you think if if Lockmore had to take any of the goal chances at the start, and would he want to put it down to great saves from Stephen O'Keefe, or maybe John McGrath would feel that maybe he could have finished one of those two early on? Obviously, he's had such a great season. Do you think if if an early goal had to go in, that might have really given uh, Lockmore the spur to kick on? Yeah, definitely. You know, we were unlucky there. I suppose, you know, Stephen O'Keefe, that's what we should be talking about. Stephen O'Keefe's great saves, you know. Um, not, not these instances, you know. Um, John, John McGrath was unlucky. I suppose, like, the, Evan gave him a great ball for the second one. And, you know, it was a great save. The first one, probably a bit at him. You know what I mean? John normally would put that in the corner. But, like, you know, it was a split second to shoot. Like, But Stephen O'Keefe has to be lauded for that. Like, you know, brilliant goalkeeper and... You know, then you look at Brian, the goal, the second goal that came, Brian McGrath was, to me, like it was a frontal charge, clear frontal charge, you know what I mean? And like he's, Brian McGrath was the biggest man in the field and to turn him upside down is is is, a, is a, an easy feat, like, you know. So, you know, should that have been a goal again? Like, you know, but definitely, yeah, we missed the two goals. But if you, if we'd have got one of those goals even, we were still well in it. Like, and as I say, the stats show that Lockmore, you know, Kieran Connolly came into it, Lee McGrath, Evan Sweeney, when they came into it, like the Bally Gunner lads didn't know what to do, you know what I mean? And we, we, I think definitely the sending offs were a major factor because, you know what I mean, Lockmore always come into their own in the second half and when they're w- within reason, when they're near a team. So I think, you know, for that reason, we definitely would have had a good shout, yeah. 
Yeah, Shane, do you, when you look back at this, do you think, and I'm sure Johnny Murphy went out to have as good a game as he could, and it seemed like the linesman made the call for the first one, but knowing, like, it's one thing saying, I know they went out to make the best decisions, but getting the decisions so wrong, did ultimately that rob Lock more of a chance to get into a monster final? Oh, like, there's no doubt about it. Like, you just you just have to be so certain about what the decisions you're making. And, um, like, I know they say you have to judge every game and its merits, but you're, you're, you are dealing with, I think it's Frankie McGrath, you're dealing with John and Noel McGrath, probably two of the, the cleanest players in the country. Like, that, that's not to say they haven't had their yellow or red cards over the years, but there's definitely not a, a, a I would you say, a malicious bone in their, in their body. Like, and, like, I... I Look, it's no doubt about it. Noel gave Paddy Levy a nice bit of a dunt, but like, there's an honour in hurling where if you give it, and I'm sure Michal got it over the years from full backs, you're entitled to give it back. Like, and I think that's all. That's all Noel McGrath did, and to see somebody hit the deck like that, and like Paddy Levy is going to probably play for a long time at Waterford, and he's going to meet tougher play people than Noel McGrath, like in terms of physicality, and like if. Is he going to do that every time? Maybe something like that happens. Like I, I it's like I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm delighted. Maybe like I suppose more knowledgeable, maybe hurling people than me, like uh, that ha- have come out, like the likes of Eddie Brennan and Mark Landers, and really have not let the, the couple of belly gunner guys away with this. Like because look, they're they're too talented to go down this road, and maybe. Uh, uh, of diving or maybe exaggerating things to get guys a yellow card and a red card they're too good and like they're it's going to cost them like this is this is going to carry over into Munster finals all earn and semi all earn a final to get there and some referee will will make a big decision and think god did this guy dive maybe they won't get a free that they actually deserve like or something like that so like you've got to be very very wary like it's it's disappointing and look outsiders might say it's sour grapes but like I don't think anybody if the shoe was the under the other foot would be would react anyway differently. Yeah, uh, Michal, like I presume you were you were furious when you were watching this happen. I mean, I'm not from Lockmore, but I was absolutely furious and I was delighted to see that other people came out and hammered what was going on in terms of like players to me exaggerating it a little bit because you we do not want to go down this road and take even more of the manliness out of the game. No, like oh geez, I was so mad, like you know, it was you know, coming back where I was playing, like <clears throat> Back in the day, like Jesus, there was, there was, you you you'd earn your free, like you know. I remember one day in Templemore, myself and Eamon Buckley were marking each other. And this is me championship, like, and Johnny McDonald was refereeing it, and 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 the ball came in, and I was coming in low, and I started calling out in front of me, and I remember Eamon pulled it across me. Now he got me down my lower back somewhere. It was nowhere really nowhere near the ball, like. And next thing I let her roar, I was re- I was an eye like, and I turned around, and Johnny just turned the other way. He actually turned and faced the other way because he knew what was going to happen. And I remember mm. giving it to him to say, and that was it then. And Johnny came out and said, lads, that's it now. And mm. we went along, we played the game. There was no one sent off. There was no one, you know. But, yeah, it happened. And these things happen. But as you say, change, you know, a bit of manliness in the game. Like, you know, you, you get a belt and you let the referee deal with it. You know what I mean? This thing will line down. If you're not injured, like, you know, it just disgusts me. Like, you know, and I remember like, years ago, I grew up my sporting Man United. Like, I don't even watch soccer now because I can't tolerate the, 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 what goes on. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about the GA, the manliness. You know, you, you 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 get a belt and you get on with it and you take it. But like you know, as I say, as I said to Shane there a while ago, unless something is done with players, you know, if if players are willing to do this, they have to be punished. You know what I mean? Whether it's whether it's whether it's a, a, a match ban or something or down the line, but they have to take it out of the game. You know what I mean? Because you can't have that going on. They're getting lads sent off when you know realistically there was no one hurt. Like Jesus. You know, we 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 all know what a tough tackle is, and that wasn't related. You know, neither of us were like you know and. Like, 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 like realistic, like you do have you see some people out there that are hiding by behind the letter of the law. And maybe if you go to the letter of the law, you say maybe they were carded offences. Like I think Noel probably no, no more than the yellow, and probably John's was a sec. Well, I would say it was a very, very, very soft second yellow. But like there is the there is the the law, and then there's the spirit of the law. And like the the, the spirit of the law is like come on, like you if, if you've been hard done by and like. I, I'm sure, and I, I've spoken to a couple of people who were at the game live, and they said what John McGrath was getting off the ball from Barry Coughlin, maybe trying to make runs into space, was a lot worse than what John gave back to tap the ball out of his hand. Like, and it's 
I, I, if there's, I, I, it doesn't happen that often, but I definitely think when it does happen to a, a level like that, it has to be called out to make sure it doesn't happen again, especially like in high profile games like we have Munster finals and semis and All Ireland's coming up. That we don't want this spoken about going forward again. We want games decided by the better team and the most skillful team. And look, we'll never know how that game would have decided. Bally Gunner might have won with 15 and 15, and you like that's what we should be talking about. And we just won't know like they, they, they won it and they're, they're true to the Munster final, but we never got a, a, I suppose a proper look of what, what, what the game would have been like 15 on 15. Yeah. And like, I know we're, we're obviously, I feel rightly hammering what happened, but Bally Gunner are a great club and I've mm. interviewed a lot of their, their players and managers. And like, there is a, there is a spot. Like, so. And I, I've been told, I was talking to somebody who was at the game and he said a couple of, uh, there was a, there was a number of their own supporters even, nearly apologised to a lot more fans coming away. Like, they, they knew themselves that um, uh, that some of the, the, the actions were questionable. Like, I'm sure it, the, the whole thing doesn't, it doesn't paint Bally Gunner in a bad, in, it doesn't paint everybody in Bally Gunner in a bad light. But look, I think definitely there's, there's something they've, 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 within that group of, they've, they've got to address. Like, if 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 you're looking to, if they're that set desperate to win a Munster in All-Ireland, could look to them like, but what value is it if you lose a bit of, a bit of credibility at the end of it. Yeah, but then again, there's the other side of it, which is like you'll win by any means necessary. That has to choose there too. They all, is, is it possible that the lot more lads weren't as cute as Bally Gunner? You know, because that experience that they had, Bally Gunner, or sorry, Lockmore were last in Munster in 2013, whereas Bally Gunner have been in there every single season since. So maybe they're a bit cuter. Yeah, you could say that, but like, you know, you're, you're cute, but what are you cute at? Like, you know what I mean? Are you, are you, are you cute at playing the referee? Are you cute? You know what I mean? And that's, that to me has to be taken away from the players because it's the it's the officials have to, um, if the officials are on top of that, like you can do, you know, what I mean? like this thing of having, you know, your father-in-law, your father <clears throat> as an umpire or something like that, like, you know, if, it, it, it's grand, okay. That's grand that I know, you know, know local old junior match and no one, no one. But at that level, like the GA have to have, you know what I mean? That uh, top referees, like you know what I mean? Like there's loads of money, as I said. They have to do something. Go down the line where they're going to have to full time pay guys to say right. You know what I mean? Are you, and even to encourage former players to come in to do this, like you know what I mean? Like even like some, I said, I'd have no problem. I'd say, Jesus, yeah, that is a good idea. Do you know, if I thought that you were getting do you know what I mean? That there was, you, you, there was a wage there, and you were saying, right, you, you, you could be asked to do all of Munster or matches or whatever, and but you're getting paid, and 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 you have the you have the best the best facilities available to do your job, you know, and it's only going to improve the game. It takes away like Bally Gunner, like are a brilliant team, like you know, and I have sympathy for Bally Gunner, the, the, the you know the club, the team, and because. You know, what they've done in the last few years has been unbelievable in Waterford, you know, and in Munster, and they don't deserve this no more than Lockmore deserve it. And it's 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 the couple. It's only a couple of players that maybe acted, and it's happened all over the country. Like you know, like you can't bring down, drag down a club, and you know, say it's the club's fault. It's not. It comes from the top, and it's the it's, to me, it's the GA need to sit down. Referees, like the big referees, I'd love to hear their their advice. They need to come and say, "Let's, we need help. We can't do this." This game is too fast and we need help. And that's the only way it's going to be sorted. It's, it's like the new bridge or nowhere. We can't do this and we need help. And if if they get the proper help, then it's a level playing field. And then all the codgery and all the messing is going to be taken out of the game then. And as you say, Shane, you can be as cute as you like. But if you're not playing the letter of the law and you, pro- you have the proper system in place to call out these things, you're going to be found out. Do you know what I mean? And until then, fair play to Bally Bunner or fair play to any team that wants to try and do what they have to do to win because they'll get away with it. Do you know what I mean? So just to kind of run through some of it, obviously I I kind of mentioned already that there was that John McGrath, a couple of goal chances early on that didn't happen. A 1-5 to 1 point uh, lead for Bally Gunner at the first water break. And I suppose Desi Hutchinson was the one causing an awful lot of trouble. The ball going in made it very, very hard for Larkin Egan. I certainly don't blame him. I don't think anyone would have been able to defend the ball going in there. Uh, as, as the second half went on, uh, Stephen O'Keefe went up and missed the penalty. Then you had Lockmore, obviously got the penalty. It was overturned. Um, I think there was a number of wides, maybe three wides in a row. And uh, like So Shane, to you, where was the game lost or, or is it simply down to the cards? Well, look, look, you can't. It'd be too simple to put it down to the cards. Look, 
you, you suppose you can't go off as a one five to a point down against the team of Ballygunner, and like you're putting yourself in, a, in an awful situation there. And look, they only scored five points from playing the match. It's like that's that's not going to be enough. I suppose maybe if they were to look back, was there? I I know they have a. You could probably, you could want to mention like Willie Everson being being missing and Liam Tracy, but Willie Everson in particular was a huge loss. But I would assume if if Willie was fit, he would have got first dibs on Desi Hutchinson. Now, now <laughs> trying to get anybody to mark Desi Hutchinson at the moment is easier said than done. Like, but I like, fuck if they had their time all over again, and I know they they have their set ways in the half back line, but if they had started Brian at six and John at seven, like but Brian is very very good at reading the play. He might have just stead that five or ten yards back and given a lark and egan a bit of a hand and i suppose that brian did start cutting off a lot of ball in that second quarter and it helps block more get back into the game and i suppose we knew in advance that that was the game plan was the the, the belly gunner center back it was a philip banny and then his delivery and then they're going to try and get desi hutchin into space one on one and i suppose look it, I suppose when we saw maybe that middle third of the game, maybe where, where a lot more had a bit of an upper hand, Desi didn't get an awful lot of ball. But then first quarter, last quarter, then when a lot more had to push up, Ryan had to go into midfield and even to the half forward line. Desi started getting on a bit more ball then again, and he he finished what five points from play, and he he set up the, the the second goal, and I think he won the penalty as well. Like so, look, he he was I suppose he was the key individual in the game. Yeah. Um, Michal, do you think that 2022 is the year that, you know, Brian McGrath really established himself as a tip regular? I, I would have felt that he he deserved to be thrown in the last year, year and a half. Um, yeah, do you think this could be I was year? saying last year now, I, I, I thought last year, you know, because I've been talking to a lot of lads and I know Brian, you know, he's a big man and, 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 and probably they were saying the pace and, you know, was catching. But like last year... He was, I thought he was playing brilliant stuff, and I thought he should have been in with tip last year, you know. And that's being honest because when it, like the man has loads of energy, you know what I mean, and he's strong and he's he's hurling ability, he's you know, he's a, for the size of a man, he's it's brilliant, like you know. And I thought, like, he's hurling, he's hurling, he's, he's, he's hurling brain will get him, like, he might, while he might lack pace, his his reading in the play, he he that makes up for it, his, his ability to read the play, he'll be in the right position, yeah, he's very quick, same quicker for. He's the very same as his father playing. I remember Pat playing, and yeah. Pat would be wing back, wing back, and he, you know, number five. But no matter where the ball would drop, he'd be there under. Mm. Like I remember watching, going, how was he able to? And it was just the ability to read. And Brian is the very same as him, just that hurling brain. And lads, you said to me, I, and I said that his brain alone will, will will counteract any, you know, I mean, pace mm. that he mightn't have. You know what I mean? And I, I do think that Tip suffered by not having him in there earlier and I, I i think he's going to be a huge force you know i hope his hand is, is recovers quick like and gets back with we need likes him you know what i mean his ability to go forward you know what i mean and his tenacity and his strength is just he just he's just he's just playing great at the moment you know yeah. liam cattle had him in the full back line for the under 20s uh, a couple of years ago do you see him more as a halfback or more of a of a fullback or you know he can probably play up the field too no bother do you know i'd love I personally would love to see Tip giving him a, a goal centre back. You know what I mean. I just think because because he's able to cover, he's able to read the game. Like you know, if you put him on one wing, you're sort of saying, right, there's your wing, right. Whereas if he's in a central position, and you know what I mean, he's watching his two wing backs. You know what I mean, and trusting him and just say, let's Brian, there you go. I think he'd be phenomenal, and that's you know because his ability to give a ball as well. You know, he pass it under pressure and cover. Sorry, guys. No <laughs> my, my, my screen went down. But his ability to cover to cover the ground is, is good, like you know. So I definitely would. I I'd say centre back. I I'd be giving him a go on it. Yeah, and and like Noel and and John have obviously been on the road for a number of years. Noel especially, he's been there since is it two thousand and eight, certainly two thousand and nine. At this point, what do you see as his future with Tipperary? You know, he really does have a lot of miles on the on the clock, but you know, he's obviously still a class act. He he's a lot of miles, but his heart and brain is is is, is as good as ever, you know. And <clears throat> if I was Colin Bonner, uh, he'd be saying, "Yeah, well, you might you might get a full seventy minutes." But he's you know he's worth he's worth definitely having there, Johnny, you know, because you know when you when the game is in the melting pot and you need a guy to come in and do something, you know who else you know only know Noel McGrath to come in and do it, and I think definitely yeah they should, you know, and John is coming into his own there now, and it's about this is about cuteness and resting lads, and I see this with. You know, inter county teams, and I thought with Tip last year, say coming in, uh, you know, even the Boris lads, you know, their long years, you've got to rest the older guys, you know what I mean? These lads mind themselves, you can't 
you can't slog them like you're slogging a 22 year old lad in January. You know what I mean? You've got to be cute about it. Mind them. Don't just keep them. Whether it's do, whether it's doing the, the yoga or the Pilates, just keeping the body right. Do you know what I mean? The small bit of hurling. Those lads. Do you know what I mean? They're in relationships. They're they're not out into the you know the, the, the drinking scene or or Black Do you know what I mean? They, they want to win for tip. You know, and you've got to give them the best chance. And and if if the likes of Noel McGrath, Paddy Maher, these lads are do, they're minded within reason and have them right when you need them. You know what I mean? Let the young lads go out in the league, but they have to keep them right. Like and I I I think they'd have a to be a great asset to tip it, like, you know, and I wouldn't write off any of them. And when you think of the way the last couple of seasons ended, you know, previously being the All Ireland champions, quite disappointed. What do you make of the appointment of Colin Bonner? And are you feeling optimistic for 2022? Yeah, like Colin was there when I was, when I, my first year with Tip in 2005, he was there with Ken Hogan, you know, and I had a good time for Colin. And I suppose, look, I haven't seen him, in, you know, in, in in a good few years, so it's hard to know, you know, what way. But I do know that he's worked with a lot of, you know, the college teams, and he understands young lads too, like you know, and that's that's a big thing, like you know, what I mean, Nothing, the lifestyle of college, you know, what I mean, most young lads come from nowadays, and 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 and, and what they're doing, and you know, understanding the the pressures of things, like you know, and I, I, I'm I'm sure he's well, you know, he's he's well keyed and he's a good backroom team, like you know, and it's. Do you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Like we all thought, probably Liam Cal was going to win, and I suppose Liam had to. Liam had to. He showed his loyalty to to Water because you know he, he had a lot of work done, and, and you can't blame Liam for that. Maybe the time wasn't right for him, and he come again. But definitely, Colin has you know he's a good setup there now, and 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 I'm I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking forward to the clash with Waterford down at Walsh Park. That's going to get tasty. Yeah, we're having, that'll be we're having two. We're having two of them. <laughs> yeah, two of them. Yeah, sixth of March. The league, think, is the, the league, the league fixture. Like so, it's, it's. Uh, I, I can't think that maybe some of what happened last weekend won't carry on. There'll be a bit of back chat between some the supporters as well. So there's, a, it could be a right. It could be the next big rivalry tip of Waterford. Yeah, and, and all that's to it, like you know. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to talk about the link up between Tip GA and Stanta in a minute. Seeing as you mentioned, Joe you know, looking after lads and making sure they're getting the right training. But Michal, just to reflect on your own Tipperary career. What uh, what comes to mind when you think of your own tip career? Um, geez, do you know? The, the, I suppose the the the, the honour of being in there was, you know, unbelievable. Like you know, representing your club, like you know, and I suppose you, you both know, like where I come from, Lockmore, and you know, it was always club with me before county. But I suppose you know, it was just a an extra thing to get. You know, I suppose you know the the honour of playing for your family and your friends and. You know the the friends I met inside, like you know the like you know Uncle Kelly and all the all those lads, like you know what I mean with Shane McGrath and Conor Manny, and we're friends for years, like you know and we meet up to this day, like you know and it's it's friends for life, and yeah, I suppose the opportunity you get, you know, you, you just looking back at like you you you'd say to you, you have to pinch yourself at times and say, geez, you know, I really got a good innings out of it, like you know, and you know sometimes some days you have bad days and some days you have good days but you know all in all yeah just uh, I, I'm very happy with my career like you know what I what I did for tip and yeah you'd have to say I, I missed out in all Ireland you know in 2010 but like you know how many players did like you know great players in Limerick and Offaly and all over the country that missed you know lost out but you have to look at you know the the most of finals you won and the you know the, the leagues and stuff like that and you know fond fond memories yeah you had a bit of fun. You had a, you had a bit of fun doing it too. Like I remember that that all five monster final and you and the Rock there down in Parky Keeve. Like it just, I'd say, I'd say he was a fun guy to be up against. He was, yeah. And to look, to all a lot of his mind games too. And yeah. uh, you know, and I remember Caroline Corr was over at the time, and she said, you know, we used to have the meetings, the one on ones or whatever. And she was asking me, you know, you know, just for meeting. I said, I'm grand. I said, it's my job to get inside their heads, you know. And she was laughing at me, so she just went up. <laughs> She, she she went back to Liam Sheedy, which Liam told her, okay, forget about it. He's all right, like you know what I mean. And that's the way I I, I was, I suppose, and a lot of it was mind games. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know you have to get, you know what I mean. If you had a head start on him in, in, inside your head, well then that was something. You might be a better hurler, but sure, mm. you try it. And was that the no, day you took him in around the back of the goals? Was it? Uh, that was the well, he was most of the final, it was a thousand and five, yeah. And, I was, yeah. and it, it, he was very physical, so you know, I was holding on to it. So I was trying to get it, you know, get away that I could make a run, you know what I mean, and get onto a ball and just upset him, you know what I mean. And I'd probably be if it was a bit cuter, I would have moved out a bit out the field because he didn't like, you know, I found out later Larry Carver used to do it to him, take him out the field, and, and that's when he was under pressure because he was he was slow to come back, like you know what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. it looked as great crack and great days, yeah, yeah. And what about the day you patted Davy Fitz on the head? 
Oh, David, geez, stop. You're, you're, you're dragging up stuff now. <laughs> and look, again, sure, you know yourself, you, you'll be getting abuse. So David, was a good man to give it from behind. And I suppose, you know, I had a good good day that day, American Brian Lohan. And um, it was, um, sure, just all a bit of a crack, you know what I mean? And to this day, I'm great friends with Davey. And that's my thing, you know. And no matter what goes on the field, like, you know, when you walk off the field, you're all friends. And, you know, if you can't walk off the field and be friends with Len, well, then you may as well forget it, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'd say there's lots of clear lads and cork lads and limit lads, you know, that I'd be friendly with to this day and that's the way it should be, you know what I mean? Sure. There should be no malice in this game and as, as I say, once the thing is done right and, and everybody knows that's the way it should have been, like, you know, you, you have to get on with it, you know, and shake the hand and have a drink a pint if you can after then. Yeah, are, you, are you tempted to lace up again for I see Shamie Bohan there, the junior C's there, it's still going strong there a few weeks ago. Is it, has, has this year given you the urge to to dust them off I next was year. collared a few I was collared a few times I right, a lot more lads but um, I, know I got an operation on my ankle there uh, nearly two years ago there now yeah. with a hole in the, my talus bone and I had to get bone grafts and all that it was just an old injury that came along and I'd just be afraid you know yourself yeah. now when you're working and stuff like that you'd be afraid yeah, it's all well and good going back like I'd be fairly mm. fit and I'd, I'd be able to handle myself but I just wouldn't want to do anything stupid do you know what I mean that jeopardise that so I don't think for that reason I think I'll game of golf now Shane does me and I can only give out to myself. There's nobody else giving out to me, so it's great. <laughs> who, who would have been the most skillful player you trained with when you were with Tip? Asher Owen Kelly was, without doubt, like you know, the most skillful. Like you know, and, you know, the, the, I suppose the, the support he was to me, like as a player, like you know, encouraging. Like I was, you know, an average player. Like, I was willing to do the the dirty work for him. Like you know what I mean? I think, uh, and if I never scored, it didn't bother me. Like as long as Tip won, and I suppose you know, he was a great. You know, a great leader and a great friend friend to have beside you. But you know, <clears throat> Larry and the other side and Paul Kelly and there was you know Tommy Dunn to finish up. Tommy just you know, I remember being at the two thousand dollar in final and seeing that pint he scored two thousand one final when he scored that pint off the left hand side and it was like a magic wand, just a flick of the wrist, you know. And I just admired him so much and to end up playing with him, like you know, what I mean, was just an honor too. Like so, you know, just there's, there's loads of players there, but you know, all great men, you know, and they put on that jersey. Mm, yeah, who would have been the toughest opponent you had? Toughest opponent, American? Yeah, American, you, yeah. Uh, sure, they're all like, you know, they're talking like, you know, physicality, you know, I suppose Damon Sullivan would have been a strong, you know, strong man, like, you know, um, Brian Lohan. Um, JJ Delaney was brilliant, brilliant fullback, like, you know, probably had the height on him, but it didn't matter to him. He'd climb up your back like a ladder, like, do you know what I mean? Just, you know, Jackie Terrell was great, great. Great, great players back in that era, do you know what I mean? And it was an honour to play against them all, you know. Yeah, and Shane, to talk about this link-up between, uh, Tim Floyd confirmed it, the link-up between the Tipperary GA and Santa College. So they'll take the lead in the strength and condition of all the senior and underage inter-county teams in both hurling and football going forward. How important is this as far as you're concerned? Oh, sure, I think it's massive. And in fairness, I think if, 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 I think a lot of people, I suppose when things don't go right and are quick to hammer the county board, when in fairness, they... I think they, they they listen to a lot of people. I'd say after this summer, particularly maybe with maybe the under twenties, the way we, we fell against Cork and the minors looked off the pace, and then the under twenty footballers even got to a monster final. But when you put them up against that Cork team that night, you could see how far ahead Cork were, and it was all athleticism and power. And look, they've gone away, and look, they, they've they've linked up with Satanta. Look, look, we're, we're we're so fortunate, and maybe it's something we should have done long before now. Is that to have the expertise of Liam Hennessy and, and Satanta right in our doorstep and like they're 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 expanding there to have the the hall in the Sarsfield Social Centre taken up to have the handball alley there in Simple Stadium now all converted into into strength and conditioning areas and look it's it's okay I think there's a lot of counties now are probably a little envious now of what Tipperary have in place. Maybe like likes of Limerick and probably likes of Cork probably have had these things in place and probably Dublin for a while now. But look it's we're probably not going to see the fruits of it maybe for a couple of years but look we've started now and like it's like to have all that to have all that information probably banked in in one set up like a an snc coach can leave satanta but all that information and uh, know how somebody some other coach will come in and he'll have all that data ready to go and know what to do with guys it's i think it's it's Look, I think all counties are probably going to end up doing it, but like if we can get a head start and maybe some other counties for a few years, it, I think it'll do us, uh, it'll do us the power of good. Yeah, Michal, you're, you told me you're, be- you're um, 
you're based up there in Limerick for the last number of years and you have a couple of daughters playing Kamoki up there. I'm sure you hear it at close quarters about how great Limerick are, but like it's very important to bridge the gap in terms of physicality and athleticism with uh, with the All Ireland champions. Yeah, look, you know, and I'd see a lot of them around, and you know, the condition they're in is unbelievable, you know. And you know, I'm, I, I'd be often I'd be back home and I'd be saying to lads, Joe, what are we not doing? Like, do you know what I mean? It's not that we're not they're, they're, we're not better or as good as them. You know what I mean? It's just as I said to you, Shane, at the start there, off 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 air, um, like you'd say, big men, like you know, what I mean, uh, they tire after a while, but like they're huge men, but the the, the and just the the energy in the lungs, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, you know, are they doing this high altitude training? Or, 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 uh, you know, what's the extra edge that they have? And, 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 I, and I don't think it's, it's something that, I just think to, to, uh, this thing with Satanta is just brilliant. Like, you know what I mean? Because I remember like when I was playing and we'd be doing the weights inside in the dome, inside in Turles, and, that, and that's back a good few years. Like, you know, and I remember Tommy Dunn was start, they started off the, the core with the younger lads and they used to be there with sticks and stuff and to be stretching and all this, you know, and I was saying to myself, Jesus, this is, this is outlandish. This is amazing. You know, at this level, but we seem to have slipped, or something has happened in the meantime. You know what I mean? That we didn't continue. And but but this this thing can only be good. Like you know what I mean? And, and as I say, give these like young fellas nowadays. I remember like when you be go, when I was growing up. Like you know, young fellas. You know, 16, 17, 18, Yeah, they'd be playing hurling, but you know, they'd be out. You know, they might be out socialising and more more so than like the culture has totally changed now. These young fellas wanted like you know what I mean? They they wanted so much. You know what I mean? And you've got to give them that, you know, the ingredients to get to, to, to be the best, like, you know, whether it is whether it's strength and conditioning, whether it's, you know, again, it's sports psychology as well. It's a big thing. To, you know, a lot of young fellas there, they're not used to this. And they come out to a big crowd, they freeze. And do you know what I mean? They could be the best hurler on a club field, but put them in front of a crowd and, and it, it just, you know, affects them. So, you know, whatever whatever we have to do to do that, like, you know, and I, I, you know, I remember a few years ago when a few lads were talking, and I said, geez, I, of course I get involved. You know, if, if there's anything I could do or any of the, the ex tip could do to, to help, you know what I mean? And I just, I, I, it's only a positive thing that's going on now at the moment. And I hope, I know it's going to probably, Shane says it's going to take a while, but, you know, we need to get back, like, Tip is a proud county and we can't, you know, to be terrible to, to, to let the, like, the Limerick or, or Cork even come along and take over, you know? Like, yeah. you, you think, like, this year's Munster final, I think, was proof of maybe that, that, that extra condition and le- the level that Limerick seemed to have and everyone else was I, I, Shane are you at the Munster final um, like we no, were down, down there that day, no. like we were down doing post-match interviews at a quarter past six on the pitch and it was so warm and the air was so warm you couldn't breathe and I said to myself how did Limerick after being ran ragged in, in 35 minutes in that heat f- find an extra <laughs> level of energy somewhere for the second half because like it just you struggle to catch your breath. It was so warm, and I was thinking, do these guys have oxygen tanks or something in the dressing room at halftime? Because, they, but obviously they didn't. But they had that bank of physical condition and athleticism that they were able once once a certain maybe a level of fatigue or tiredness crept in with Tip that they had their levels to stay going, and they just blew Tip away in the second half. Mm, but they didn't pick as many players over the age of thirty too. I mean, you, you need that right balance of of mm. sort of age and youth. I would have said me on. Yeah, that's my thing coming back, you know, like Sir Brian McGrath and these lads, you know, should have been put in, like, you know, I'd never, you know, you'd never complain at the end of the day if a young fella was put in and you knew he was good enough and, you know, if it didn't work out. But, like, you know, when you, when, you know, when you're expecting a lot of older lads at that level and that intensity of heat, like, you know, to, to carry you over the line, you have to put so much into the first half, you know, it's a, it's a hard ask, you know, and, and, and I felt sorry for those players, especially the older players, you know, the criticism and, you know, after the match, they didn't deserve it because, you know, you can only give what you give, you know what I mean? But it's up to, you know, the, the, the structure and the management system to say, right, you know, we need to we need to give these young lads a chance too, you know, and bring them on. And, and there's so much talent, like, you know, I'd say the, the under-21 All-Ireland and the under-20 All-Ireland and, and to say that we, the car got way more than we got, you know, as in lads onto the senior panel, you know, is it the only fault? I don't think so. You know. No, you like you'd like to think like I always I always worry sometimes when t- lads are too successful. Well, they win a bit underage. I think will they have the hunger when they get to senior level? Will they think it will fall into place of them after winning a minor or under twenty one? But I actually think now that maybe a good chunk of these lads have been maybe forced to wait and wait. That that hunger will be there for the likes of Craig Morgan and Brian O'Mara and Brian McGrath. That if they get an opportunity next year, they're going to grab it because they've. 
you could be said they've been forced to wait, right? whereas Cork probably had to bring through some of those young lads quicker because they they had no choice. But definitely, I I'd be surprised if an awful lot of those young lads, if they're given an opportunity next year in the league, especially, won't grab it because they have they've they've had they've had to wait. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. Uh, you know, I was there over in, in Lockmore after the it was after the Hurling County final, and I was talking to young Connor Bow came over and fair play to him. He came over to you know to, to congratulate the boys, and I was standing beside him. And I was saying to myself, "Jeez, there was a big man." Like, do you know what I mean? And He's a giant. So like these so. are, yeah, do you, do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm a big man, and he was mm. he was he was looking at me in the eyes, like, and I was saying to myself, "You know, we need to be putting these lads, like, you know, giving them the chance." These like. The worst thing you can do is by not playing these lads, is you affect their confidence. Do you know what I mean? These lads, you know, when they come through, like the likes of under 21, under, under 20, under 21 level, and they're, they're winning, and they're, they're, they have that winning mentality, you need to keep, that's when you need to, to go with them. You know what I mean? You, if you, the longer you leave them, you know what I mean? It, it definitely affects, you know, them psychologically. They can affect their player, like, you know, and it, he'll doubt himself, am I actually good enough? You know what I mean? And, and, and it's up to, it actually improves the older lads too, because, they say, Jesus, I'm not letting my jersey. You know? Whereas if an older lad is there and he's getting, he knows he's going to be playing because he knows the manager doesn't trust a young fella. Well, is there much pressure on him then to, do you know what I mean? To, to mm. do that extra little bit, like, you know what I mean? And if he realises, well, look, I'm only going to get 30 minutes here because young Conor Bow or whoever is going to come in behind me is, is, is going to be on, you know what I mean? And that's that's competitive and that's, that's the tip you need to do. They need to get in those young fellas quicker, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, you've been absolutely brilliant with your time, Michal. So appreciate that, and uh, commiserations to Lockmore. No doubt they'll be back again next year. No problem, Shane. Just before we go, um, I'd like to wish Declan Laffin the best luck with uh, Clock by the Collar next weekend. Um, huge club man, a huge, a great friend of mine, and um, you know he's he sprinkled a bit of his magic down there, and they're, they're a great team, and and I hope they win. Like I, I, I don't think Valley Hill are moving as as well as they were in previous years, so I hope they win it. Like Joe, and the whole of Lockmore will definitely be behind Declan. Next weekend, and thanks a million. No, Cheers, no. thanks very much, Michal. All the best. Okay, Cheers, Michal. that was Michal Webster there. So, actually, yeah, the true little uh, we'll have a little quick chat on on Declan Laffin and Clock Balacala for a while. It looked like Ken Hogan was going to lead St. Rhinus to a shock victory, and you would have yeah. had two Tipperary managers over two clubs wearing Tipperary colors in the Leinster final. Would have been a bit of dr- a bit of a dream for us. Oh, it would have been would have been great. <laughs> I know it would have. Uh... I probably would have got a bit of stick if Valley Hale had come up short. Was it the tweet I put up the night before? Sort of half expecting that to be a Valley Hale Clock Bellacala final. And I said Crow Park would have been the best venue if it was Ryan as Big Bellacala because it would have been, um, or Clock Bellacala, it would have been sort of a novel thing. But um, look, they have nothing to lose. And as Michal said, like they they haven't, they've been sailing close to the wind against O'Loughlin's and against Mount Leinster Rangers and now against St. Ryan is maybe, maybe. Maybe the good years, maybe are, are, are I suppose maybe they're they're on the slide a small bit. Um, I still think they'll take they'll take beaten. I, maybe they'll they'll do enough this this weekend. Um, particularly because it's 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 a big game for for clock. Like it's it's probably a bit of how would you say a bit of nerves. It could be could be ten or fifteen minutes in. Like and the the match could be away from them. But look, it, I turned off the radio Midlands Radio Three yet. 2-4 to a pint in the match last Sunday think of God but this is going to go to one, going to go going to go one way but um, look De- De- there's definitely something in, in De- what Declan Laffin is doing and you think down the line he's got to be getting a phone call from Tipperary to get involved with the Premier County at some level of minor under 20 or, or senior down the road because look you don't win two county championships uh, two different clubs in two different provinces and counties without knowing a bit about Hurling yeah, and two county titles in the space of something like 80 days up there yeah. at least because of the delay 2020. Um, Picky Maher, he's a star man, but like an 18-year-old for Kilmacud Crokes was put on him, which, you know, from the start seemed like a mistake. Very talented 18-year-old, mm-hmm. but just putting him against a mature county player just didn't make uh, too much sense to me. It'll probably be Joey Holden picking him up if he's inside this type. But mm-hmm. Evan Shefflin, he picked up an injury, had to go off. Colin Fenley had to go off injured. Um, you're going to have a suspension for Joey Cudahy. You're just hoping then you can just tie down, you know, the last three winners of the Young Hurler mm. of the Year, Adrian Mullen and Evan, yeah. uh, sorry, and, and Owen Cody. Oh, cool. Still an unbelievable, they're going to be unbelievable outsiders, yeah. especially the Croke Park factor. That definitely plays more into Shamrock. But I was thinking like, there's probably a nice chunk of that clock Bella College team would probably have played with Leash maybe in that in that All Ireland quarter final a few mm. years ago and then the, the McDonough final that year. So, like, uh, I suppose those, those lads will probably have to stand up and maybe take the lead here and I suppose 
especially in the first 15 minutes to help the, the younger, maybe the inexperienced lads along until they get settled and get into the game. Yeah. So it's like absolutely. there's no doubt I get that you're going into a an occasion and a venue like that. Lads some lads will get starstruck if they're not used to it. Yeah, definitely agree with you on that front. Um so and another tweet that came out from the county board last night is county board uh, financial year ending September thirtieth and for twenty twenty one shows a surplus of three hundred and three thousand euro. So things looking a little bit better from that point of view for Tipperary. So obviously that that's a huge thing. If you don't have the finances right, it's very hard to support your team. So that's that's big for Tipperary. Oh, definitely. Yeah, look, I, I know they were they they they, they did admit that this was the the, the 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 wage subsidy scheme, particularly for the likes of um the GDA is like without that without that money, like it would have been very very hard to, to keep those guys got on board. Like so, um, like the, they were very impressive figures because when you consider that those that three hundred thousand surplus doesn't include. The club championship gates from October, which but the, the books had closed, like, and then you had last November and December inter county. Probably, um, I know, I know that that, that that was centrally funded, but there would have been some element of expenses from that that would county board would have had to look after themselves. So, look, all in all, this was a from where to where a few years ago when they were rocking up, um, deficits after deficits have two uh positive years in a row is encouraged. And, and I suppose I suppose the thing is now is not to. Not to get too um, not to get too comfortable, and I suppose the the that report that um Lee Moshe wrote or for the um for the year or for 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 that yeah, he supplied to the county board of a commercial advisor. I suppose like that's where that's where you sort of have to go. You can't just sit on your laurels and expect gate receipts and a big benefactor to help out. You got to go and help yourself and or find the income yourself. And like it does seem like um that i suppose we're, we're going to probably get imminent announcements on on a short sponsor and a, probably a sponsor for simple stadium and like that's look people might not like to say god maybe my maybe tj is getting too obsessed with money but look to to catch up on the likes and the limericks and the dublins like who do have a big advantage one is a benefactor and one is in dublin where you can get a lot of maybe commercial advertising or commercial sponsorship a lot easier like you you have to be keeping up with the Joneses here, like yeah, it, it, it's to provide the probably the best of facilities and the best of training equipment for lads, and I suppose expenses then for lads to maybe come down to to, to training and turlets every week. And I suppose that that would be one. That's one of the things I think people forget that like we're such a big county, which means you have a lot of travel expenses for lads maybe tipping down from Neen or up from Clanmel, whereas if you're in Dublin, you can be in probably DCU or in a few minutes for a lot of lads or maybe if you're in Limerick, I'd say most of the Limerick lads are probably based in Limerick so you could probably be at a gym in about 10 minutes or something like that so or 10 or 15 minutes so it's, it makes a huge difference you're talking like a man who doesn't know the traffic on the M50 I'll tell you that <laughs> but yeah, we'll jump on to the All-Ireland Camogie semi-final at the weekend um, Sarsfields went in obviously this is the delayed 2020 All-Ireland in Camogie Sarsfields uh, finished up 11 points to Drum and Inches 4 points so unfortunately for Drum came up a little bit short in that game in Eden Derry but a, a great run for the season and like Sarsfields are a class team so there's no sh shame in losing to them No, no I suppose that was probably the, the thing like there's probably that, that bit of inexperience maybe was was um, that probably was going to be the thing that accounted against uh, Drum and like this was a very very tight contest for a lot of it and Sarsfield probably pulled away in the last quarter but eleven points to four like four point they only scored four points Drum they scored nothing from play like and look they I suppose the the, the strange thing about it is they don't have an awful lot of time to try and learn the lessons like they have the Munster twenty twenty one Munster Championship and in probably what in early in the new year or so like if it'll be interesting to see what the things they learn from that i'm trying like, they can change things around pretty quick like you're not probably not going to get too many new players in you're probably going to be looking at maybe maybe switching players around in different positions maybe particularly maybe in the forwards if you if you do come up against the likes of sarsfields again in a 2021 semi-final or final that you're going to have to find some way to to, to score with them because you're probably not going to like I concede eleven points is not an awful lot, but like if you're only scoring four, you're not going to win an awful lot of games. But look, it's um, I am sure it's it's it's, it's something to learn from. Because like no more than Sarsfield, like Sarsfield had to endure a couple of setbacks and semi-finals and finals before they got over the line. And um, look, I think that'll be a that'll be a cracking final with with Schlock Neil next weekend. Like probably the the two definitely the two best club Camogie teams in Ireland over the last five years. Well, I, I, I believe. Is it Owler? Sorry, I thought it was, I thought. 
Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was Schlock Neil, so I maybe misread the scoreboard. So sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a, qu- a question I ask you then is, uh, what about some of the, the Tipperary teams that are going to be competing in the in the club football in Munster? We'll start off with we'll come on to Ballina in a while, but Drummond Inch against Nigel of uh, Tralee at a couple of years ago when Nigel were getting to the All Ireland Junior Final, I was sort of doing the odd interview here and there with different members of their yeah. uh, backroom team, but their team that's still on the rise and they're going to be playing senior in Kerry next year and they have players that maybe people would have heard of Dermot O'Connor and Jack Barry are two lads who played midfield for Kerry in the last mm. few years and Stefan Akunbor he's one of the players that just came back from the AFL and I think he played with St Brendan's board in that yeah. county semi-final that was on TV where so like what are drum bringing to the party here they've probably got uh, good energy in the team oh, uh, Emmett Maloney someone to stand out obviously Seamus Callum will be playing yeah. too I, I, yeah, it's 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 going to be a difficult ask for them on Sunday. Um, I suppose I did. Maybe they would have preferred. Maybe I think that the weather this weekend is looking pretty decent. Maybe they would have hoped. Maybe just to keep it, keep it wet and slow. Like it's, I I, I believe Naguil won the Kerry Championship against the head, particularly in the final. They were missing some guys because of COVID. And I don't think Jack Barry played in that final either. Like so, you think they're probably going to come back to full strength for this one? And we all know how. Look, you're playing the ninth or Kerry Intermediate Champions are the ninth, technically the ninth senior team or ninth team in Kerry, and they're playing the seventeenth in tip. And like over the years, the tip teams have struggled at this level. So look, it's um put look, drum an inch, probably I would say are probably a senior team in all but name and tip, like in terms of maybe if they put their full focus on football for the last four or five years, that they really would have been intermediate wouldn't have been intermediate. Look, I think there'd be pride there, like they will they, they won't want to be, I suppose, they won't want to leave if this is the, the their last game of the championship and of a foot, very, very positive football year. They'll want to go down with their bit of pride ahead, hell high, and make it as difficult for Nagrail as possible. But um, it's hard not to see the Nagrail winning this one. Yeah, so the winners will play Newmarket of Cork or Corfin of Clare. So the Munster Junior Football semi final, um, the game that isn't involved in a tip team will be Boher Bui of Cork against. Neva Gwilla in uh, Kerry. But it's, it's an interesting one. I'm half tempted to go down, uh, stay down in Burris Lee for the weekend to watch this <laughs> Balna against Mount Zion because Stephen O'Brien, obviously, tip footballer, Mike Breen, tip hurler, going up against Ozzy Gleason. That would be interesting to watch now. Yeah, yeah, no, I believe, um, yeah, no, I do believe Ozzy plays for that. Uh, the Mount Zion plays football for them. So look, it's, look, I think it's the one special thing about the GA, like you could see see some of the best hurlers in the country crossing over into football and seeing what they're like and what bit of leadership and how they, how they I suppose how they um how they lead their club in a game. You think it's their secondary game, but look I I think this is a game probably where I think Ballina will probably be to be too strong. Like you, you you don't beat the Limerick representatives as comfortably as they did and not be a very, very strong force. Like the I think the forty one lads train and they really have gone after the football this year after being knocked out with the hurling early and like they will see look if you, they can win on Sunday they're in a monster final in the new year like and you, against what Boher or Boher Bui or, or yeah Boher Bui or Neve Willa like and look if they have every chance then like you get to a final once off game and like I think I think this is a, a stronger tip junior champion than we've had for a number of years was I think no more than drum I think Ballina are probably probably should have been an intermediate team long before now if they put their minds to it with the, the talent there and like look they've been counting under 19 a football champions this year the one under 21b last year they're, they're talented footballers there Owen power matthew power like they've they've they probably have the ability to become a very very decent and strongest dual club over the next few years if they keep their mind to it. i know hurling will still be number one but like i would have said if you're a an arena level team with that a hurling team with that level of football talent you probably you'd be prepared to give both a real go in a year because like if you your in hurling is so competitive but you wouldn't want to throw maybe a chance to win an intermediate championship as an as a near, next couple of years aside yeah absolutely not so that's uh that's all the tipperary involvement i think that we're going to have this week yeah any final thoughts then on that Lockmore, Ballygunner, or or even anything from the year that you want to? Ah, uh, sure. Look, I I think I said a lot of it in my column this week. Like, geez, I just like I know it's it can be it can come out of sour grapes. So as I know that there's always you know as I there's a lot of people out there who love to take Tipperary down a peg or two and they like to see a suffer and squirm and 
be on the wrong end of things. And look, there's no doubt when you, you go back to 2018 and the, the phantom goal and the Gaelic crowns, like we, we were on the receiver, what we're on the receiving end. But it's not it's not nice when it happens to you, like when you a bad couple of bad decisions going against you. And look, it, you don't like being critical of referees, like, but look, it's sometimes when you see really bad decisions, like we called out, I know, yeah. You can point to maybe the, the barge and Noel McGrath and the build up to the second goal, but look, I think that's you can accept those sort of things with their they're sort of playing mistakes that they happen in every game. You, they, you, they sometimes they go for you, sometimes you go against you, but especially ones where you lose players to a red card or two red cards or maybe simulation. Like you, you, you really don't want to see that coming in. And look, you like to think it's been it's been raised enough that. Um, probably the, the latter stages of the club championship and into next year and like we're looking at i think that the 5th of february the national league is starting so like it's it's going to come pretty quick to tipper in the what the the monster league against kerry probably in early january as well so it's all going to kick off pretty soon again absolutely okay well look that's it for uh for this year of tipcast we'll uh we'll hopefully be back very soon cheers shane chat again soon cheers shane happy christmas happy christmas Welcome to Tipcast by the Nina Guardian.